We started looking into the MTSS framework and it's been over like 20 years now, we can build with AI as a central component. We wanna make sure that we're also providing value without AI, simplifying data collection, centralizing and providing collaboration tools. Welcome back to another episode of Shifting Schools. I have a question for you to ponder as we kick off today's episode. How do you see AI transforming education in the next, let's say, five years? If you're like me, you've probably seen hints of how this technology is starting to influence the classroom, but today's guest has taken it to the next level. In this episode, we'll dive into some exciting developments around MTSS frameworks and how AI is making it easier for educators to focus on what matters most, supporting students. You'll hear about a powerful new tool called IntelliTier, which helps educators streamline data collection, enabling us to quickly track student progress and provide personalized interventions. We'll also explore the importance of collaboration among educators and how AI can start to reveal patterns in student behavior and performance that we might not notice ourselves as students move from classroom to classroom. Our guest today is Jose, founder and CEO of New Light, a startup focused on transforming the way schools implement data-driven support systems like MTSS. With experience at Netflix, Jose is bringing cutting edge tech solutions to education, making it easier for schools to adopt these systems with fidelity. Now, before we jump into today's incredible conversation, here's a quick word from today's show sponsors. Looking for a place to connect with fellow educators, share ideas and grow together? Well, welcome to Camp Shifting Schools. It's the free, vibrant community where educators like you can learn, network, and collaborate. With the fall of X, formerly Twitter, finding a trusted space is more important than ever. Join Trisha and I for exclusive courses, webinars, and Ask Me Anything sessions designed just for educators like you. Let's build a better future for education together. Visit camp.shiftingschools.com and become part of the camp community today. Hey folks, FETC, that's the Future of Education Technology Conference, is just around the corner, happening January 14th through 17th, 2025 in Orlando. It's your chance to be part of the first and best EdTech event of the year. As a special offer, just for the Shifting Schools community, you can use promo code SHIFTING10 at checkout for an extra 10% off and all access or session passes. Head to FETC.org to register today, save, and get ready to bring the future of education into your school. That's SHIFTING10, all caps, SHIFTING10 at FETC.org for an additional 10% off. Offer ends December 13th. Now, let's get you into the conversation with Jose and how new software that leverages the power of AI can support us in doing the work that really matters, meeting the individual needs of every student. I know by the end of this one, you're going to want to head over and try it out for yourself. So make sure to check out the show notes for all the links to get you started and leveraging IntelliTier today. And with that, on with the show. All right, welcome back to another episode of Shifting Schools. I'm super excited to have this conversation today with Jose, founder and CEO of New Light. Uh, just finished working at Netflix. That could be a whole nother episode, I yeah. think, about uh, working at Netflix with you. Uh, but you've just started this new startup called New Light. And we're going to dive into this. Uh, what is your hope with New Light and contributing to, to the educational space? 
But before we do that, all over your social media and LinkedIn and everywhere, I keep running across this that you believe education is on the brink of transformation. Jose, as we get started into the conversation today, can you maybe elaborate on that? What is it that makes you think this is the time for a transformation in education? Absolutely. And it's not just education. It's like every sector right now with the um, evolution of AI. And it continues to evolve really quickly. Just last week, OpenAI announced their new O1 models that spend more time thinking and actually analyzing before responding, as opposed to just trying to predict what the next word would be in that um, output. But education, I think, is going to be able to really leverage this in a lot of different ways, providing personalized we're seeing a lot of it right already with mm-hmm. personalized student plans. We are focusing on personalized student support. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to upgrade a lot of the software that's in education. And that's a big part of what we're hoping to do at New Light. So let's talk a little bit about over at New Light. You have a program, for lack of a better term, called Intellitier. Uh, which really integrates with uh, multi-tier systems of support, or as we know it here in education, MTSS frameworks. Can you explain how that integration enhances the effectiveness of MTSS for schools? Absolutely. So as I was digging into what our first like solution was going to be inside yeah. the education space, um, we started looking into the MTSS framework. And it's been over like 20 years now Um in the works where this framework is being implemented slowly into schools. And when it's implemented with fidelity, which is a big key term that I saw over and over again, when it's implemented with fidelity, then you see a lot of the student benefits, right? You see Mm. increased attendance, increased grades, increased graduation rates. But there have also been a lot of studies that have shown that it's really hard for these schools and districts to implement it with fidelity. A big part of it is, as I started looking into it, and made this entire thing my life um, was as I looked into the framework and tried to learn more and more about it, the more I realized that I didn't know almost anything about it. Mm. It's very theoretical in nature. It's um, It basically just tells you to look at the overall picture, right? And then try to decide what the best intervention strategies are there moving forward. Teachers are of course overworked. Um, training days are pretty limited throughout the school year. so it's kind of unfair to expect everybody in the education space to be able to understand this framework and how to apply it most effectively. And so that seemed like a great opportunity for us by bringing in AI, which can understand the framework and then providing a platform that simplifies data collection, which is also something that takes teachers away from the focus of teaching, right? We want to simplify data collection, centralize it, provide collaboration tools, And then by providing that entire picture along with MTSS framework information to AI, then the AI model can provide personalized and effective student intervention strategies specific to that student. And so that should hopefully allow for more schools and districts to implement MTSS with fidelity. Mm. Talk to me a little bit about what, what it's trained on. Uh, when we say that, you know, it, it's allowed to support teachers in coming up with accommodations or coming up with resources, we know that all of these Gen AI tools are trained on data in the background. What are you using as a training model uh, to make sure that the outputs that it's giving to an educator are, say, based in best practices? Yeah, so we found a lot of, luckily, a lot of public resources um, around MTSS and different frameworks, right? There's also RTI, there's PBIS, Mm -hmm. there's additional ones. And so we want to provide it with kind of like all of this information so that it can make the best decision possible. Um, So we have hundreds of megabytes of resources that we provide to the AI so that it can access all of that information to then make the best decision possible. And if you could kind of maybe just walk us through, what does the workflow look like for a teacher? I'm a teacher. I'm in the classroom. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing MTSS in my school. I have students who are on 504 plans or IEPs. What, what does this look like from a, from a teacher stand? If you could work, kind of walk us through what, what would that workflow look like for me? Yeah. So um, the first thing you need to do is find the student in the system and you can search either through the student identification number that a lot of schools use or student name, right? 
you find right. a student and as a part of that um you go to the student page and we have a big like permissioning system uh built into intel tier to make sure that the right people are the ones that are able to see the, the data for um, the students. So, so that built-in privacy piece. Exactly. So if you have permissions to write in a new um, SEB event, social, emotional, and behavioral event, then you can click a button, it'll pop up a form, and we have a lot of dropdowns for antecedents, behavior, consequence, um, and function. I think we left as an open text box so that you can mm. put in suspected function. And then you just save it and that's it. And one of the biggest things that we're proud of is that we're bringing in a lot of technical expertise from Silicon Valley. And so a lot of the first thing that a lot of people notice is just how fast Intel tier is. Mm. But that dropdown, the reason that we went with that format is because we want teachers to be able to get in, record the data and then get out and get back into like their lives of teaching. Um, and so we provide the ability for schools and districts to control what fields are shown in the pop down specifically for that school. That way teachers just need to find it, click on it, save it, and then they're done. Um, whenever there's a student support meeting or there's an just kind of overall looking at the student, then that's really where the AI assistant piece um, can come into play. You can ask it a simple question, like what interventions do you recommend for this student? And then automatically our platform combines all of the information, all of the resources, and then comes back and provides you with intervention strategies for that student specifically. It's also focused on making sure that um, we provide lower tier recommendations first and only if we see persistent or extreme um, events that then it starts to level up to tier two and tier three. I'll tell you how excited I am about this. I mean, this is this is exactly the kind of stuff that we've been talking on this podcast for a while that is coming in education where AI is truly embedded into a product. Educators, are you searching for a new space to connect, collaborate, and grow? Well, Camp Shifting Schools is your new home. With the decline of X, formerly Twitter, we're here to offer a safe, welcoming community where you can join other passionate teachers. Take part in free courses, webinars, and live AMA sessions to evaluate your practice. Ready to join the conversation? Head over to camp.shiftingschools.com and become part of the camp community today. Learning and connecting awaits. Talk to me different, like the difference between something like this, where you start, you start the product with AI being a central part versus saying what we're seeing a lot of, especially organizations or, or companies in the education space already is adding AI, I would say on top of the product that they already have. What do you see as the fundamental difference as you build this from the ground up, le truly leveraging AI in the background? Uh, I think one of the biggest advantages that we have as a new company is that we can build with AI as a central component. Mm. Like how does it fit into all of the different workflows inside of the product? One of the things that I'm really excited about coming in the near future is being able to automatically detect which students might need additional intervention or additional focus. Um, and so that's on the way. But the biggest difference is when you have a product, especially a legacy product that's been around five, 10 years, yeah. it's really hard to get it to integrate into all of these, these different workflows or parts or logical systems mm. to then be able to make recommendations. But when you have something fresh, then you can build around the AI. You can, every time you add something in, you can start asking the question, like, how can this impact this? How can that impact that? Um, but on the other like side of the world, we also wanted to make sure to provide a solution that provides value without AI. Like AI can be wrong, 100%. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I can admit that, I have no problem admitting that. And so we wanna make sure that we're also providing value without AI, um, simplifying data collection, centralizing and providing collaboration tools in order to ensure that these student support teams can more effectively and more streamlined manner, be able to like look at students and all of that data and to make the decisions that they need to make. That's a big 
value proposition from Intel here, even without AI. Mm. What feedback have you been receiving already? I know you're pretty new. We talked before we started recording. You're in a couple states and a couple districts right now. What is the some of the feedback you've been getting already from from Intellitier? Yeah, so far it's been positive, which is good. Um, some feature requests are coming in as they start to use it. Sure. One of the one of the biggest use cases that I've loved that I've heard about and that they wanted like a feature from was they asked the AI to build a doctor report like with a summary mm. of all the SAP events and interventions for that student. And they wanted to be able to print it out. And so they reached out, we added in, we just added in an export function where they can now export it to doc, to Word or PDF, mm. and then they can print that out from there. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, the commenting system, the, uh, there's a lot of upgrades that we could do with the collaboration side of the, the world. It's pretty exciting right now because these customers and something that I've really like told them from the start was you're here early. We're building something for them, right? It's not something that like we want to be overly op opinionated about. We want to provide value to them. And so the biggest advantage that they have is that they kind of get like a little bit of a custom, really high skilled, like set of tech people mm. to build something that they need. And we're still in that, in that mode. We're very happy to like receive more and more feedback to really figure out like where we're lacking and what value we need to provide. Mm. So does this system, does, does, uh, Intellitier then, does it like connect into your student information system? So it's got a connection to, for example, a lot of schools use something like power school or, or a, a program like that. So I take it that this sits on top of that. So you can search for student names right inside the system. Yeah. So what we do is we export um, a lot of student information, not a lot of student information, the information that we need, right? Name, yeah. grade, um, class information, we can bring that over. And then I think that power school has like just a general table where you could collect events that happen mm -hmm. for a specific student, or I I've seen the table. It's actually like all students from the entire school all right. going to one table. And it's like, you have to run through and filter yourself. It's a little bit, um, unorganized either way. We know that that's a place where a lot of these events are recorded. So we have the ability to import all of that into a tell tier one. So you don't lose historical information that you've already stored in your mm. information system. And then depending on what the school or district wants to do, we can also export the information back into that table so that they mm. can keep that table up to date. Our hope is that Intel tier is a much simpler way to collect data. So we want it to be the authoritative source where they just mm. store things. And then we could just send things back into power school so that they have that for their records mm. or any other student information system. So is it, is it a, is it a live link then between them or are you copying in over? So you, you then set up a API link or whatever. Well, yeah, you? it's an API link that we have. Yeah. That links it, that links in as well. Yeah. Uh, so. As, as many schools, you know, many schools struggle with adopting new technologies like this. Um, what challenges have you faced in implementing Intellitier or Neuralite solutions in schools? And how have you worked with districts to overcome some of those, some of those issues? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, challenge that we've faced so far is teacher adoption, right? Like how do we get yeah. teachers to want to use this? Our focus and a lot of this is Netflix philosophy. So you mentioned that I worked at Netflix. I, yeah. I was there for nine years and, and I love that company. I still love that company. I think they did a lot of things right. But one of the best things that they've always focused on is simplifying the user experience as much as possible. Mm. And that's something that we're bringing in as well. I actually have a UX designer with Netflix experience. So we're bringing that over. Mm. Um, and ultimately what we want to do is we want to make life as easy as possible for the users. So if teachers have a super simple way to collect the data that they need to collect and get back to focusing on what they need to focus on, then trying to get them to adopt Intel tier should be easier than ever, right? Like mm. instead of creating your own file system and organization system, pen and paper, writing this down, go in here, click a few things, get out, go back to your, and then don't worry about it anymore. And so with that simple user experience, the that threshold to get people to use it isn't as high as it normally is. It should be as easy as finding a show on Netflix, right? <laughs> it, the target for Netflix is nine seconds. I don't know if that, I'm pretty sure that's public. So yeah, 
it's wow. I've been out of Netflix for a while, but they, <laughs> they want to be able to get you to play something within nine seconds, because mm -hmm. if it takes longer than nine seconds, they start to lose like users interest yeah. and people go to other um, streaming networks. And what a great thing that we could adopt if I could. And I'm, I'll, I'll even give you 15 seconds. If I can go to a system, pull up a student, write in a comment about a, a support that I tried, about a behavior concern, and click save and be back in front of my kids, that's a game changer, right? And and allow, and I love the ability then to allow AI, like all once all of this stuff is there, then you can allow AI to look at patterns that exactly. we might not recognize every day, especially if a student is moving between, like I'm thinking of a middle school kid that has seven different classes. Yep. And, and if everybody is dedicated to putting in this information, the AI is going to be able to pick up on patterns faster than the humans can who are only seeing this kid at 50 minute chunks, exactly. right? And, and so how do we leverage that to support every student? I think is a pretty incredible, powerful way of leveraging AI to support us in doing the work um, by us feeding it the data that it needs to have so it can make these recommendations back to us. Yeah, and there's a lot of exciting opportunities with just this model overall. Stepping aside from the AI component, actually semi-stepping aside from the AI component, even the MTSS framework has been built off of like over 20 years of a lot of great experience and um, studies, but generally the studies have been relatively small. Like one mm -hmm. state here with a few schools and districts have tried this, that's even work. Mm -hmm. Another school over here. It hasn't been millions or tens of millions of students sure. and data being collected. By bringing and centralizing all of this data in, in one platform, then we could bring in some of the other principles that we use in Silicon Valley, which is really, it's a, it's a data-driven framework, right? Mm -hmm. But if we have a large scale of data, then we can really figure out which intervention strategies work in mm. which situations and which ones don't. And arguably down the path, my hope, my goal is that we have the most effective TSS framework, period. And it's simply because it's all driven by proven data. Mm. I love that. I love that. And that's just, yeah, I can, I can already see it in my head because then you update the training model and then the training model gets better. And it's just, it's this continual loose, continual loop of improvement, which is what we talk a lot about in education. Educators, are you searching for a new space to connect, collaborate and grow? Well, Camp Shifting Schools is your new home. With the decline of X, formerly Twitter, we're here to offer a safe, welcoming community where you can join other passionate teachers. Take part in free courses, webinars, and live AMA sessions to evaluate your practice. Ready to join the conversation? Head over to camp.shiftingschools.com and become part of the camp community today. Learning and connecting awaits. If a district is listening to this and I've got a teacher who's all in on MTSS or a special ed director or a head of school that says, oh my gosh, if we could lift you know, what we are doing with MTSS and have a tool like this that can support us. If there's somebody who would like to learn more or reach out to you, I noticed over on the Neuralink website, uh, there's a link to be part of the pilot program. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Sorry, New Light website. Oh, um, sorry, New Light website. Yeah. Sorry. So we um, are trying to figure out what our best marketing strategies are right now, right? Because we have a platform that we love, that we're getting great feedback from from users. Now it's about getting that information out there. Coming onto this podcast is obviously part of that. Um, if you go to newlight.io, you can book a demo and the demo will be with me personally, and we could go mm -hmm. through it. So far, the conversion rate, every time somebody sees that demo, they get really excited. And they yeah. say, it's getting people to that demo that has been a challenge, but, um, Demo, 30 minutes, we can just talk about Intel tier, what it provides, and if it's a right fit for them. Hmm. The other thing that we're doing right now and should be live by the time that this podcast is out is if you go to newlight.io, N-E-U-L-I-G-H-T dot I-O, we are going to provide a free version of Intel tier where you basically will get almost all of the functionality wow. um, for free. 
So what we're doing is we're going to allow for one user to get their own personal school. Sure. And through there, they can add in students. They could put in the student information. It's all FERPA um, compliant. And we'll also provide the assistant so that they can try all of it. Mm. Uh, the features that they're not necessarily going to get are the ability to collaborate with other people within their schools. So it'll be yeah. one person, one school. Um, if we then want to move over to, to the paid model, then we can add in, uh, provide that support to add in additional users mm -hmm. so that everybody can access that school and put in the data and like collaborate with each other. And, and, really well, and, and that's huge, right? Like, again, we go back to a middle school student to have seven different teachers or 10 different teachers who interact with that one kid, all being able to see from course, from class to class. What are the supports that are working? What are the systems uh, that are working within MTSS? I mean, that's a huge benefit. And and I can even imagine, even at an elementary level, you would maybe have like the special ed teacher would have access, the classroom teacher, the PE teacher. So you would have everybody that has access to that student. And that's part of what you run in the background, right? Is making sure those connections are, are the connections that need to be made to support that kid. Exactly. One of the um, most interesting things that I've heard recently uh, it was that before Intel tier, it was possible for multiple teachers to run their or to be doing their own interventions for mm. a specific student, mm. but because they weren't collaborating with each other, they didn't sure. know that each one was doing that. Was the doing a separate type of intervention yeah, for this exactly. kid. Yeah. And so just providing a central repository for like the interventions that are being applied for that student, mm. it's a huge value. Huge value. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, if people want to find find out more, learn more, uh, sign up for that pilot, uh, that pilot program, uh, we will have a link to the new newlight.io.io uh, over uh, in the show notes of the podcast. If other people want to reach out to you, connect with you, where's other good places for them to go? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, if you go onto the website and fill out the contact us form, I will get that email as well as a few of others in the company. Um, but I'm pretty heavily involved with everything that we're doing with customers right now. I'm super friendly. I don't bite. I'm, <laughs> I'm generally virtual, so I can't bite anyways. But uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to talk about all of this. Like The more that I can speak with customers and the needs of different schools and districts, then the better that we can do in terms of building the product that, once again, is ultimately valuable for them. Yeah. We're here for all schools and districts. We're not here for us. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to get you on the podcast and get you in front of an audience that can maybe help you grow. And, you know, listeners out there, uh, it doesn't cost you anything but a free time to go and see what a demo is. Or by the time this podcast comes out, there will be a free version for you to go over and play with. Yeah. I think the idea that you announced that it's FERPA compliant, that'll be a huge thing. Uh, private data, data privacy is really big, specifically yeah, around these all these new tools that are coming at us. And so... Um, I'm thank you for answering those questions as well, because I know that the, those are questions that are on a lot of educators' minds of just what is the privacy concern. Yeah, we have a pretty big permission system built into it so yeah. that only the right people can see um, the right student data. Yeah. And then um, we, so we do use ChatGPT models, but we don't call ChatGPT OpenAI. Mm. All of the data stays within our servers on Azure. And yep. so the way that that works is um, the models themselves come into Azure and then we run the models run from on there. our own servers there. And that way we're not calling any third parties in order to do any of this analysis to ensure yeah. protection of the data. Very, very cool. Uh, that's going to give a lot of people <laughs> relief knowing that you have thought through that as well. Because I know that right now is a big sticking point. Um, Jose, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you. And I was just, I was just quickly going to say that we're only going to get better. These models, this AI, this entire movement, it's moving quickly. It's evolving really fast. Yeah. This new, I'm really excited to get Intel tier in touch with the O1 models once they're ready on Azure. Yeah. To really, like, allow it to take a step back, analyze it, think about like what those recommendations will be. It's only going to get better over time. It's just a game changer, right? The next model will be just that much better for sure. For sure. Newlight.io, that's N E U L I G H T.io. There will be a link to it in the podcast. Please reach out to Jose and his team. 
uh, sign up for that free demo. That doesn't cost you anything or go over there and start playing with it. Uh, if the free version's out by the time this podcast drops, uh, have a play, see what it does, and then take it up the ladder inside your school organization. Our goal, as we keep saying with AI, and this has been kind of our message here at Shifting Schools, our goal is to leverage technology to do the work so we can get back and in front of kids exactly. and what I love is when I find products where as I'm listening to you talk and I'm watching just the quick little demo on your website that's what these tools are for you know we need to support kids through MTSS we need to support kids through individual education plans but what we need to do is be with those kids in the classroom yep. we don't need to be filling out the paperwork and we've got technology now that we can leverage to do that part to support kids even better and give us more time to be with those kids that's where we're at our best, folks, is when we are with those students uh, and allowing technology to take some of this stuff uh, in the background off our plates and, and support us in doing the best that we can in support of kids. So, Jose, thank you for such a great product. I look forward to following your journey uh, and maybe speaking with you in the future and seeing how things are going. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate the invitation to the podcast. This was amazing. Thanks. Hey there, dedicated listener. If you've made it this far, we know you're passionate about shifting the way education works. And Trisha and I appreciate you. If you loved what you heard today, we'd be so grateful if you could take a moment to rate and review Shifting Schools wherever you listen to podcasts. Those ratings help us reach even more educators just like you. And if you know someone who could benefit from these conversations, please share this episode with them. Just one person. Think of the impact we can make together. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter for even more great content. And if you haven't already, join us at Camp Shifting Schools, where the conversations keep going long after the podcast end. Thank you for being part of this journey. And thank you for being part of Shifting Schools.